Hey, we'll go ahead and get started. Sorry for the delay. It's 9.01. Thanks for joining us for uh, Wilson County Wednesday. Um, typically a day set aside on the last Wednesday of the month for uh, our uh, Wilson County Mayor, Randall Hutto. If you were on here a minute ago, you heard that he is uh, at, a, at a meeting of other Tennessee government governors or government officials and uh, he has uh, his very capable assistant, uh, one of the two, Sarah Davenport. She's gonna be our source of information today. We're glad to have you. Um, and uh, we'll record this, I believe, uh, for anybody that might wanna share it later. But uh, with that, uh, Sarah's on there. Good morning, Sarah, how are you? Good morning, I'm great. How is everyone? Better now. <laughs> Good. Better good. Now. So uh, thanks for filling in and uh, sharing a little bit. Anybody, I, I see Eddie and Eddie and Kathy. Courtney was on there a minute ago, maybe some others that might have some questions, but uh, oh gosh, we got a number of them now. So uh, I listened to him on the uh, Coleman show when he does his monthly thing and he just basically takes the first, uh, uh, he, he stops nonstop with things going on in Wilson County. And I'm sure knowing him, he has left you with a long list of things to share with us. And um, I didn't just wear this for a, you know, no particular reason. This is a special week and I hope you'll touch on that as well. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, again, thank you so much for having me today and allowing me to fill in for Mayor Hutto. He does send his regrets that he couldn't be with you. This is an event that he does really enjoy doing. Um, I was telling Mark and a couple of the others earlier that even in a virtual world right now, we still keep him busy and we keep him on the move. His calendar stays full. Just can't get him in two places at once all the time. Sometimes we can, <laughs> it being virtual, but that doesn't always happen. Uh, as Mark mentioned, he is attending the ATVG conference this week, and that is the Association of Tennessee Valley Governments. And this is a great program. It's really good for Mayor Hutto to stay involved in it as they aid us with funds for economic development. They also aided us with some funds during the tornado. So it's really good for Mayor Hutto to stay abreast of what's going on in that organization. And this is an annual conference that he does always try to do. So he will be at that. Um, again, I am grateful for the time that I get to be with you today. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, obviously, I am not as knowledgeable as Mayor Hutto. I know typically if you ask him a question, he is just Johnny on the spot, quick with an answer. Um, I will do my best to answer anything that I can. Anything that I cannot answer, I have paper and pen in hand. I'll be glad to jot down those questions along with your contact information and we'll get you an answer um, as quickly as we can. Before I do open it up for questions, I do have some information that Mayor Hutto asked that I share with you. Some of this may be a repeat, hopefully not. Mayor Hutto did leave me his notes from Coleman, so um, I hope to have added some new information to that as well. I will try to speak slowly. I tend to get a little nervous and rush through my thoughts, so please feel free to stop me at any time if you have any questions, need anything repeated, anything uh, along that line. I may not get through all of the material that I have perfectly fine because this is an opportunity for you all, for you to ask your questions, get what any information you need or want. And I certainly want to allow time for you to be able to do that. So again, feel free to stop me at any time. Um, so if you guys are ready, we will jump right in. And I've tried to sort of break this up into pieces. And I wanted to start with some community events and information some that have already happened, some that are upcoming. Thought you might like an update on some of the things that have happened and our upcoming events. So last month, Ag Extension held a socially distanced going away parade for longtime Ag Extension Director, Miss Ruth Carell. And that was, it was a great event. Mayor Hutto, along with Miss Brooke Driver in our office and myself were invited to attend that. Had a spectacular turnout. I can't tell you exactly how many wagons and tractors and cars were in that parade, but they were wrapped around the parking lot there at the Ag Center. And Miss Ruth was very surprised at the event and at the turnout, and it was a great send off for her. So we certainly wish her a very happy retirement and also want to thank her and the folks at the Ag, Ag Extension Center for all the great work that they do. 
Mayor Hutto attended the Mount Juliet Senior Activity Center Spaghetti Dinner Fundraising Event earlier in the month. This is an annual event they held each year to raise funds for the center. Looks a little bit different this year as most of our events do. Uh, they actually did a drive through for pickup of the meals and my understanding is that worked really well. It turned out great and it may even be something that they continue to do in the future since it turned out so well. In addition to October being Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And Ms. Shannon Lynch with Home Safe had asked Mayor Hutto to sign a joint resolution along with Lebanon City Mayor Bernie Ash and that they also hold a candlelight vigil. And they did that last week, took place here at the courthouse on the steps. So I'm very well attended event, very, very nice event. We appreciate them allowing us to be a part of that. Mayor Hutto attended a groundbreaking ceremony at Wilson Manor over on Colesbury Pike here in Lebanon. And this is the new addition to their memory care unit that was formerly known as Southern Manor. Earlier in the month, Mayor Hutto had the opportunity to speak to both a Boy Scout and a Cub Scout group, one at Charlie Daniels Park and the other at Carroll Oakland Elementary. Had great turnouts at both events, great partic participation, and this was a chance for Mayor Hutto to get to speak to a younger generation, and that, that was really great for him. He had a chance to talk about the importance of citizenship, what it means, why it's important, also a little bit about government and how it works, starting at the executive branch all the way down to the local level. And I think this was a, a great opportunity for him to be able to do this and for these young kids to hear about this, especially during an election season. So we were grateful for the opportunity to be able to participate in those. Some other community events and news. Applications have closed on our Governor's Volunteer Star Awards program. The committee actually met yesterday to pick both our youth and adult winner. And we're gonna be announcing those winners in the coming weeks. I can't give you a lot of details right now because we have not yet contacted the winners. So we wanna make sure that they know first. Uh, what I can tell you is this was the hardest decision that we have had to make since I came on the committee four or five years ago. Um, we had a total of 12 applications. We had 10 adults, two youths, and like I said, it was it was a very, very tough call. Um, it's, I know it's very humbling to, to see and hear about all the great volunteers that we have in our county. As someone who is not native to Wilson County, it's just, it left me in awe to read some of these applications and realize all the great work that we have going on here. So, I certainly appreciate everyone who made a nomination. I appreciate the committee for coming on board and, and going through these applications and you know trying to <laughs> make the best decision that we could. I, I did wanna remind everyone, if you didn't get to make a nomination and you had planned to and just you know ran out of time, had trouble accessing the application, whatever it may be, it is still there. My plan is to leave that on our website throughout the year. So if events or anything go on that, um, that you know about um, and you think, hey, that's a, that's a great thing, that's a great volunteer, I wanna go ahead and nominate them, that will be available to you. And then we can just add them to the pot for next year so that it's pretty much open all year long. You may only hear us talk about it a certain portion of the year when those applications come due, but it is something that would always be available to you. You can find that on our website at wilsoncountytn.gov. If you go to the programs tab on the left side of our page, it'll take you straight to that online application. You can always call me if you have any problems with that um, and I'll be glad to, to walk you through that. So no issues there. For anyone who participated in the Chalk Art Festival, winners will be announced after November 7th. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. They plan to have a socially distanced event that is by invitation only. And I believe those invitations will be for those who actually participated in the event. And that's when they will announce the winners during the event. Then they'll make a public announcement after November 7th. So if you participated in that, just be on the lookout for it. It is coming. Uh, a new program that 
I did not know about. This may be something that is statewide, maybe even nationwide, but it was definitely something that I had not heard about and wanted to share this with you. And I believe Mayor Hutto also shared this on Coleman, is the Thank a Vet program. And this is being ran by Ms. Jackie Murphy and the staff over at the Register of Deeds office. And it's a great program. It allows veterans to file their DD-214 military discharge papers through the registers office. And then they will also provide them with a personal military photo ID card. They can then use that card as proof of service to any Tennessee business who might participate in discounts for military. So let's say you have a veteran who's dining at a restaurant who gives uh, discounts for veterans or maybe even active military. Instead of them having to wonder, oh no, do I have my DD-214 papers on me? Am I gonna be able to use this? They just pull out that handy ID card from their wallet or their purse and they can present that and then the business will honor that. It's free of charge to any veteran. They just need to bring in their discharge papers and a valid photo ID and they'll create that additional ID card for them while they're there. If they have already filed their DD-214 papers, because that is a service provided through our veterans office, they just need to present a valid photo ID in the registrar's office and they can still get that ID card. It's also great for any businesses that wanna participate because they will add those names, those business names to a list that they will give the veterans so that they know what businesses participate this within the county. They will also add them to their website so that people can go on and see who participates in it. And they'll also give them uh, stickers and signage that they can put on their storefront so that veterans and other customers know this is a program that they participate in and that they uh, honor our veterans as, as well as us. So it's a really great program, really easy to get involved in. If you have any questions about it, if you know a business who you think might have some interest in getting on board with this, uh, please call over at the Register of Deeds office and speak with Miss Jackie Murphy or any of the staff would be able to help you with that. And their number is 615-443-2611. Will you tell us again the name of that program? I didn't write that down. It's called Thank a Vet Program. Thank a Vet. Okay, uh -huh. thank you. And I actually have a, this may have it backwards. It's, it yeah. looks perfect. Okay. That looks cool. That's perfect. This is a thank flyer you. that I have that's put out by Miss um, Murphy's office. So you may be able to get these over there. She may even be distributing these in various locations. I'm not sure. I can check on that though and, and find out. And let me let me make myself a note to do that. I'll follow up with her as well. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Give me just one moment. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So we talked about that. The Farm Bureau Expo Center has got lots and lots of events scheduled from now until January 2021. Uh, I won't take time to list all of those events, but there are plenty of them. Um, and if you're interested in any of those, if you will visit farmbureauexpo.com and click on the calendar, you'll be able to see a listing of all those upcoming events and the details to those. Okay. The uh, James E. Ward Ag Center had two big hits the past couple of months um, that I'd like to make mention of, and you may already be aware of these, but just wanted to, to reiterate that. Plans are underway for the FFA to locate its headquarters here on the grounds of the James E. Ward Ag Center. Also plans for the state fair to make its home at our Ag Center. That project is still in the works. We've not been given a deadline as of this time, but all indications are that, that it is coming. So we look forward to, to hearing more details about that. The fall surplus sale is scheduled for next Friday, November the 6th. That will also be held at the James E. Ward Ag Center. We've put a flyer on our website um, under our announcements tab. So just go to wilsoncountytn.gov and just there on the homepage, if you scroll down just a little bit, you should be able to see that. 
it'll show you all the items that are available. We do this in conjunction with the school system. So we have um, lots of items that are available if anyone is interested in anything. Uh, Mark, you had mentioned me speaking about Red, Red Ribbon Week. So I do have a little bit of information on that. Thank you for wearing your red. We appreciate that. <laughs> Susan, Susan Shaw um, was at the city commission, board of commissioners meeting on Monday night and Mayor Haggerty, um, Mount Juliet Mayor Ed Haggerty read the proclamation and she got up and, and said a few words and um, uh, sounds like a great program and it's a week long recognition, is that correct? It is and it actually is this week, runs the 23rd through the 31st. So we've got a couple more days left and the goal has been to encourage citizens to participate in drug prevention education activities and you know, make a visible state that we are committed to, uh, to drug prevention here in Wilson County. So, of course, Mayor Hutto signed this along with our three city mayors. And of course, they were all eager and very willing to sign this proclamation. And we certainly appreciate that. Appreciate Miss Susan attending the uh, Mount Juliet City Commission meeting and speaking more on this. And thank you all for having her there at that meeting also, Mark. We appreciate it. Would you, um, you were talking about community events. Um, if you aren't already, don't have it on, would you share with us anything that um, the county might be planning for the November 11th or whenever Veterans Day? Um, are there any type of veterans recognition events going on at the county level? Typically, there is an event that takes place over at our veteran service office. They have not given us any details at this point. Um, I imagine those will be forthcoming though, and we can certainly share that information. And let me make myself a note to do that. But that typically comes straight from their office and they share that with us. They uh, Usually it seems like they have a, a wreath laying ceremony. That's a very nice ceremony that they put on. So I imagine they'll they'll make, make efforts to do that again this year. I know other groups that typically do um, veterans uh, just by the very nature of what a veteran, you know, the, the age um, it puts, um, perhaps a, a disproportionate amount of those in the at-risk category, category. And I know a lot of people are kind of torn between wanting to recognize them, but at the same time, not putting them in any situation that is, uh, you know, un put unnecessary risk. So uh, um, maybe it'll be a, a virtual, televised wreath laying or whatever, but share with us if you would, when you hear anything and we'll be glad to help pass the word. Absolutely, yes, we we will do that. It's usually around the first week of November that they get us that information. So um, I do expect something next week, but I will put a put a call out to that office. Just let them know, hey, as soon as you get it, we need it so we can push it out. But thank you, I, thank, thank you for bringing that up, Mark. I appreciate it. Um, of course, everyone probably is aware that early voting is in full swing. And if you plan to early vote, you have until tomorrow, 6 p.m. to get that done. Polls are open, as I said, Monday through Friday from 8 to 6. They have also been open on Saturdays from 8 until 1 p.m. Um, of course, we won't have another Saturday opportunity to early vote. It does end tomorrow on the 29th. Please make sure that you take your photo ID with you. If you have any questions about early voting, absentee voting, just voting in general, please call Philip over at the Election Commission. You can reach him at 615-444-0216. And also just wanna remind everyone that on election day, November 3rd, if you plan to vote on that day, you can go to any polling location in Wilson County. You no longer have to go by what's on your voter registration card and go to a particular precinct. You can go anywhere that is convenient for you. So um, we're, we're really proud to be able to do that. That makes it very convenient for a lot of people. I know it certainly makes it very convenient for me just being right here next to the election commission to have a good location to go get that done. I did want to mention that Voting by mail seems to have gone very smoothly here in our county. We've had large turnouts for early voting this year and really want to thank Philip Warren and his staff as well as all of our poll workers for everything that they are doing during this election season. The last community event that I'd like to make mention of before moving on is the marathon train. Uh, most of you probably know that typically every April, 
we work with sponsors to provide rides on the We Go Star to and from the St. Jude Rock and Roll Nashville Marathon, and then also to a Toast of Tennessee Wine Festival on that same day. Our sponsors are kind enough that they take those ticket sales and they donate those back to the kids of St. Jude. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. You get a cheap ride to Nashville, don't have to worry about parking and traffic and all the headaches that go along with that. It's a great way for us to promote the train and ridership on the train. We also get to help out some really deserving kids and their families in the process. As you know, COVID threw us a bit of a curve this year, so we did not get to do things as we planned. Both the marathon and the wine festival were canceled. Uh, the marathon has been rescheduled for Saturday, November the 21st. As of right now, all indications are that that is going to happen. And we are working with a sponsor right now, Famous Footwear, to provide rides on the train to and from the marathon. And they have agreed to once again donate their ticket sales back to St. Jude. There is more information that is forthcoming on this. We haven't publicized anything at this point because, you know, obviously with COVID, there are some logistics that we have to work out. So um, I hope to have that information to you very soon. But did want to put the bug in your ear that unless something were to change, it looks like that's going to happen. And also while I was talking about that, I wanted to say thank you, especially to Mark. You always help us out with this every year as well on the wine festival side. I know, of course, we weren't able to do this, do that this year, but we really do appreciate all your participation in that in, in years past. And hopefully we look forward to getting to do it in the future as well. Well, we, we hope so too. That was a big hit for us, but uh, um, we, we've always appreciated St. Jude uh, when the neighborhood over by Mount Juliet High School called Jackson Hills got up and running. Um, it's probably been at least three, if not four years by now, maybe five, I don't know. They moved the St. Jude Dream Home giveaway from Williamson County to Jackson Hills a number of years ago. So we've had a pretty long standing partnership with a uh, relationship with the great folks at St. Jude. And you only got to see one story and you're ready to write a check. So absolutely. They're, they're a great group to work with. And we actually work with them pretty closely while we are promoting the train for this event as well. And, and they are, they're, they're outstanding to work with. So uh, we are glad to hopefully get to do something again this year. I'm, I'm very hesitant to say with, you know, a hundred percent certainty that it is going to happen because it seems like every situation is so fluid right now. But again, all indications are that that it is going to happen. Um, I, I, that is all the community events that I have. I have a lot of other information, but I was going to stop for just a minute and see if anyone had any questions or anything at this point, anything that they needed or wanted answered. I'm not sure how much time we have, Mark. So I wanted to. We, we've we've got a we've got a few minutes, and I know. Uh, I, first of all, I would suggest to you that everybody on this call and everybody that's watching, it's become a way of life of of pivoting adjusting, being flexible, and it's, it's hard to make plans uh, a few hours ahead of time, much less a, a few weeks. So uh, we certainly understand that, but thanks for giving us a heads up on that so we can at least get it on a radar screen and be paying attention to it. I will tell you from the business perspective, um, you know, it's always um, on our minds these days with school, COVID outbreaks, mask mandates, no mask mandates. And I know that's a world that you wish you weren't in either, but it's a fact of life. And if you could share with us maybe some of the raw numbers, just a, a kind of an overview of, and then the decision to put the masks back on and what it might look like given the information you received since that decision was made. Sure, I can give you um, a little bit of information about that. I was going to see, Mark, if you could help me. I'm not sure if I can do it from my screen, but if you go to our website, you can actually pull up a chart. We have, from the beginning, we have kept charts on our website that show the 14-day uh, the average. It shows our daily cases, and it also shows the deaths in Wilson County. And there's one chart in particular that's on that site as well as on the press release that we put out. And I apologize, I know it's very, very difficult 
to see here, and you're probably looking at this backwards as well, but it will show you, if I can do this, here's kind of where we were when we started the mandate the first right. time back in July. So you can see we had somewhat of a downward trend. Here's where we were when we put it back in. Yeah. And you can see that it's continually, continually going up. So with the increased cases, uh, Mayor Hutto felt like he didn't have any choice but to reinstate it. And this was also at the encouragement of Governor Lee. Mayor Hutto sat in on a virtual meeting with Governor Lee and several other mayors in the county. And I wanted to see if I could remember the date that that took place. Um, let's see. Let me find that. I'm so sorry. I do have it. I don't, uh, I, when I talked to Mayor Hutto that morning before he did that, um, mm -hmm. I don't think it really was a surprise. And, and my comments to him were, you know, the, the mask mandate had been put in before with numbers that were lower than what they were the day he had to make a decision. And it, I told him it almost seemed hypocritical not to do it if it was necessary then. And I can tell you, I haven't, maybe those joining me this morning, have different experiences, but I haven't had the first person even raise an eyebrow about it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's what I'm seeing, probably some of you as well, those that are gonna wear a mask are gonna wear a mask whether he tells them to or not. And if those that don't wanna wear a mask, no matter what he says, they're not changing their minds. So uh, to me, I, I can't see it interrupted anything as far as we were concerned about. Others on here may, feel differently. I don't know how it impacted them, but uh, you just got to think that everybody that has to make these decisions is getting up in the morning and wishing that this wasn't something we had to deal with and there is no playbook for it. So I personally, I appreciate his leadership to be honest with you. I, um, he, uh, he's done what he said he was going to do. And, you know, um, I, I just want to support whatever, whatever he decides. Well, thank you for saying that, Mark. Um, and you actually took a lot of the words right out of my mouth. I do appreciate that. And I will be sure and pass those sentiments along to Mayor Hutto. It, it's, it's exactly like you said, there is no playbook for this. We've never dealt with this before. I think maybe at this point you could argue whether or not we ever thought we would be dealing with something like this before. But, um, you know, be that as it may, it is here. We are dealing with it and we are dealing with it the best that we can. I, I share some of the same thoughts as you, Mark, as you know, I've thought from the beginning myself, if you're planning to wear a mask, you're not going to have to be told to wear a mask. You're just going to do it. Yeah. If you're not going to do it, a mandate's not going to mean a lot to you. And a lot of that is because, yes, we have a mandate that is not necessarily enforceable. Of course, the sheriff's department, law enforcement in general, they would much rather educate than citate. And yeah. I, I do understand Governor Lee's point too. Of he seems to think that it you get a better response from local government, and they should be the ones to make these decisions because they're more in touch with the members of their community. You know, they know the needs there, they know what's going on, and and I and I do understand that. Um, it, it has been it has been difficult to deal with and to make these decisions, but, you know, Mayor Hutto did feel like based on our cases and the direction, you can clearly see the direction that trend's going, that we just didn't have any other choice. So the mass mandate has been put back in effect. That took, it went back into effect uh, last Saturday, the 24th, and it actually went into effect at 12.01 a.m. So when you got up Saturday morning, it was in effect then. We haven't been given an end date on it yet. The call that Mayor Hutto sat in on with Governor Lee, the order that he has out right now actually expires on Thursday night, I believe is when that is set to go out. And if you'll give me one moment, I will double check that. I do have that information in front of me. Yes, the order is in effect until October 30th at 1159 p.m. So, so that is when, night. I'm sorry? So that would be Friday night. Yes, Friday night, I apologize, Friday night. And Friday night, that makes more sense. Uh, and, I, and I believe that's probably because it seems that Governor Lee has done these for 30 days at a time. My first thought was, why didn't he take it to the end of October? But his last one expired on September 30th. So I think he's going in 30-day intervals. 
what he has decided to do now based on the call with all of the mayors in Tennessee who joined in on the call is he plans to extend or to give the, the mayors the authority to extend a mass mandate through the end of the year. Now, that's not to say that Wilson County will extend through the in, end of the year, but we would at least have the option to do so. So Mayor Hutto's plan is to continue to watch our numbers just as we've done every day and, and see where we are and, you know, just kind of take this day at a time and see how it goes. So that is the plan as of now. Of course, we can't we can't do anything without that authority from Governor Lee. So we are waiting for him to put out an additional, excuse me, an additional executive order saying that it has been extended through the end of the year. So that's what we're waiting for right now. But but again, we are in a mass mandate that started last Saturday, October the 24th. So we are asking you if you are in a public place where you cannot socially distance that you please wear a mask. Now, obviously we do not, um, we can't mandate anything in businesses, schools, healthcare, healthcare facilities um, and churches as well. So they, they set their own parameters. They all have their own boards and their own governance on that. Um, but we, we do ask that you, that you help us out with that. We, we know that masks don't necessarily stop the spread, but it certainly seems to help slow the spread from all indications that we have. So we wanna do everything that we can to keep our most vulnerable citizens safe. So we certainly appreciate everyone's help with that. Very well. Did that get your questions answered, Mark? Do I need to give you- No, I think, I think that's fantastic. I, uh, uh, I know I had people asking, well, since we're all gonna be wearing a mask anyway on the 31st Halloween, let's just, let's just cancel ours on the 30th, so. Uh, now I can tell you uh, we were talking about that 14 day average it's it's interesting to note that just a 48.5 I don't have that in front of me but it would be on the chart that's on our website because we do update that daily uh, Miss Brooke Driver and Miss Susan Shaw in our office they have just been rock stars about putting all of these charts and graphs and information together and getting that out to the public so really appreciate the work that they that they are doing on this um and continue to do we we receive calls i, I don't want to say daily but we do receive a lot of calls about it you know concerns about the mass mandate some are in favor some are against and you know again that that's where it becomes hard because mayor Hutto has to represent everyone and has to try and take care of everyone and again it's a situation that we never thought we would be in don't know that we even could have prepared for anything like this, but you know, we're taking it a day at a time and, and doing the best we can and want to stay safe and encourage everyone else to stay safe as well. Very good. Does anybody have any, uh, Eddie, it's not a seatbelt, it's red ribbon week. And that was the best I could do on short notice. When I got up this morning, I thought, darn it, I meant to go get a red ribbon. But since we do ribbon cuttings, I knew where I could find some. So I didn't know if things were getting really turbulent there at the chamber. Or they are. I'll tell you what, it, it, ask Marla, just hang on, see what's happening. But, <laughs> well, in as we end our time together, um, unless there's a switch in the schedule or we change things up, typically the last Wednesday of the month, I believe in November, is usually the day before Thanksgiving or something like that. And so there's a good chance we won't be meeting having this meeting in November, and we certainly won't be having it the week between Christmas and New Year's. So with that, um, I believe, Sarah, unless you've got any closing thoughts, I see uh, COVID. Oh, thank you, Ray. Uh, there's another website. Um, I know hospitalizations, uh, um, that's always, I mean, that from the beginning, it seems like hospital capacity has been uh, the driver behind a lot of the decisions. And I don't know, I hate to think that in just a few months, we've already become used to it, but it's um, those numbers crept up and have caused a lot of people a, a lot of concern. And here we are just now going into the, to the flu season. So. Um, hey Mark. Yeah. Recommendation. Uh, Y'all were talking about what's being done for the veterans the Mount Juliet Morning Breakfast Rotary is going to do a drive-through breakfast 
on Veterans Day at 7 a.m. I did not know that. What day is it? It's, it's going to be on Veterans Day on the 11th. On the 11th. Good. I had not heard that yet. Thank you. They always do a spectacular job, and I knew they'd come up with something. I just didn't know what it would be. Unless something changes, well, okay. that's the plan for today. <laughs> Miss Kathy, right. who could I contact with that organization to get some information that we could push out from our office? Let people know. Bob DeSalvo would be your best contact. Okay. I can help you with that. Thank I'll, you. I'll connect the two of you. Bob's a rock star. Yes. Yes, he is. <laughs> I, I did want to mention one other thing, if I could, and I'm so sorry, because Ray, you had mentioned something about the hospitalizations. I found the note I was looking for. It was October the 19th that Mayor Hutto had set in on that call with Governor Lee. And one of the things that Governor Lee brought up was that his meeting uh, with the White House task force was that Tennessee, Tennessee as a whole, now not Wilson County, but Tennessee as a whole hospitalization had increased at that time by 30 percent. And several counties had been listed as hotspots, including Wilson County. So at that time, he was urging uh, Tennessee counties to put in a mass mandate so that was another reason that you know Mayor Hutto felt like he had to do it but um, I did happen to have that hospitalization stat in front of me I wanted to make sure I shared with you I'm sorry Miss Kathy I didn't mean to cut you off I apologize we uh last Thursday morning we had our board meeting in this the chief operations officer for Summit TriStar is on our board and he called in he was unable to make the meeting because he had been at the hospital I guess most of the night um Summit Hospital last Thursday morning, he said, was at 106% capacity. Um, I haven't spoken to anybody, Tracy or Jay, over at the uh, at, at Vandy in uh, in Lebanon yet. But those are those are kind of scary numbers. So uh, everybody's got a chance to do their part to help out. If you don't want to wear a mask, don't be around. Don't get within six feet of people. And go get on a hiking trail or whatever. But uh, Nasty stuff. So with that, um, I think we'll end our time together. Um, I appreciate everybody. We're having a ribbon cutting. You can tune in live at 1130 Facebook Live. Marla will be out there. We're doing it at the new Love's Truck Stop. Um, I haven't had the chance to see it yet. And I know we think, oh, truck stop, gas station, whatever. But let me tell you, the gentleman that's running it came from Murfreesboro when he was running there. Down there, their annual sales were a little over $55 million a year. And the expectations for this one were at or higher than that. I'm not real good at math, but sales tax on $55 million is a significant impact in our, uh, in our county. They, they're, they're, they're great folks. Um, truck parking, from what I understand, is maybe 95 spots. Um, and if you think about the sales tax that can be captured on 840 between Gallatin and Rutherford County, all of those trucks in there, that could be a huge, that's a huge, huge benefit financially for Wilson County. So we're going to go out today, show our appreciation for um, them investing in, in Wilson County. First time I've ever cut the ribbon at a gas station with about 75 gas pumps. I don't know. So uh, anyway, hope to see some of you there. Um, and with that, we will conclude our time together. Sarah, thank you. Thank um, you. Your co-worker had twins. Of, of, gosh, it's probably, they're probably two. Bethany, yes. <laughs> Bethany Harrison doing well. We don't, we miss her. She used to fill in. She's doing well as I hope. She is doing well. She actually has baby number three on the way. So, right. and the boy, the twins did just turn two and got another one coming, but right. she's doing well. I'll be glad to tell her you said hello. Those of us that have been doing this for a while, remember her and uh, <laughs> I'm tell her we send our best uh, holiday greetings to everybody. I do know that um, for family gatherings and, and parties, you're only allowed, I think, have six people. You can have 30 for a funeral. So... On November 26th, our pet turkey is going to die. Um, you're welcome to join us um, for the service and we'll, food will be provided. So with that, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Let's, we'll see you later. Thank you, Mark. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye.